Yes, tous, bonjour, this is Mike Hero, founder of Dividend Stocks Rocks and passionate investor. Today, I'm here to help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Um, speaking of conviction, I've made a trade that is quite interesting and requires a lot of conviction. Um, I did that trade uh, last week. Uh, my DSI members uh, were aware of uh, Brookfield uh, Property Partner for a while and I decided to once again put my money where my mouth is and did that trade. Um, since you know I'm 100% invested all the time so I had to find liquid assets to buy Brookfield, right? So what I did is actually I sold one of my best performer throughout several years which was my shares of Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's is um, doing very well. Uh, I've recovered plenty and it was trading um, around 130 bucks at the time of recording this uh, video. Uh, basically the reason why I decided to sell Lowe's it's quite simple is, is this is the way I build cash in my portfolio instead of waiting on the sideline and having like 10 15 20 percent in cash what I do is I let my winner runs and whenever I see an opportunity in the market I just sell either part of the shares or my entire position the reason why I decided to get rid of Lowe's completely in my portfolio, it's not because it's a bad company, it's actually a dividend king, so it's a pretty good company. The problem with Lowe's is first, it was going sky high, and at the same time, they're having problems in Canada. Um, a few years ago, they bought Rona, and for some reason, at first it went very well, but it's been almost two years now that sales are slowing down, they're closing down stores, and they can't seem to figure out how to grow their business in Canada. I don't like that. When I compare to their, their results to Home Depot, which is their competitor, and they're actually larger, and Home Depot is larger than Lowe's, uh, I kind of like didn't like the fact that they're always lagging behind Home Depot and now they're having problems in Canada. So yes, it's still a good holding, but I thought I could use my money for a better use. And I decided to make a speculative play on Brookfield property. Um, very interesting fact about Brookfield property. You can have it under um, uh, limited partnerships in the US, uh, REITs in, the ca in Canada, and it trades also as a regular corporation now. So basically you have four different tickers. I'm gonna put them in the link description below. It's gonna be easier for you to follow. Uh, all tickers are the same, it's just tax implications. So please verify with your tax uh, experts, your accountant to make sure that you're buying the right one for your account, for your portfolio, depending if you're Canadian or US. That's very important because uh, the way that the dividend will be taxed will be completely different depending on where you are and which account you buy it. So now, what about property partner? Um, what do we have to do here? Uh, this company, this REIT is all about retail REITs and offices. A lot of people think it's a full play on retail, which is not. Actually, they, der they derive 41% of their revenue from retail. 43% from offices and the rest, which is 16%, is pretty much multifamily. Um, you have storage, like it's more like diversified REITs on, on like a smaller level. So basically what Brookfield does is that they create small communities. So you have the retail, the offices, and then you have multifamily. So basically they create a whole neighborhood where everybody is helping the other. So basically when you have retails, you need population so what better than having offices and then people living there in their apartment or their condo so they go to work and then they shop and they come back home and it's all within a few quarters so that's the first thing I really like about Brookfield. The second thing I really like about them is their prime location you know when we talk about real estates location is the most important thing and they have prime assets and I think that this is where it's different from other REITs that you're going to look in the retail business. First, it's their diversification and the quality of their assets. 
Now, the stock has been booming this week, so you might think that you're a little late for the, for, for the party, but keep in mind that the stock was trading over $25 not too long ago in Canadian, on the Canadian stock market, so in the US, I, I can't tell you how much it is, but basically the stock lost almost 50% of its value. Now it's back up maybe like 10, 15%, so you still have plenty of room to catch it up and then still make a great profit out of it. The stock is already priced for a dividend cut. At one point, I think the yield was at 15, 17%. Now it's roughly around 10, but even at 10, the market still expect that there will be a dividend cut. In April, the company was able to collect 80% uh, of their, 90% uh, of their office uh, rent, but only 20% for their retail rent. So obviously we're talking about rent deferrals, and then we're talking about some people that will, some companies that will go default and will never pay. And this is where the stock, this is why the stock has been, has been hurt on the market so much. We expect a dividend cut. We don't expect it's gonna be, we're gonna do well so far in the upcoming months but what is really important and what is the big difference between this retail REITs and others is liquidity we're talking about seven billions in liquid assets right now so mostly it's line of credit but they still have 1.8 billion dollars in cash most importantly, they are backed by Brookfield Asset Management. So if you're unfamiliar with the Brookfield family, that's what I call, they have infrastructure, they have renewable energy, and they have property partners. So basically, BAM, uh, Brookfield Asset Management is a huge asset manager and then they have like all those specific sectors, um, different businesses that you can invest it with their own purpose. Their whole purpose is to generate yield for investors and pump more money into BAM. So when you look at BAM balance sheet, what is great is they have $59 billion in liquid assets. Uh, most again most of it is getting from line of credit but they still have 13 billion in cash so what's gonna happen in the upcoming quarter is Brookfield property is going to have a rough year they're going to have a lot of retails going default not paying their rent and they're gonna have liquidity issues they will have to draw money from their line of credit but what's not going to change is their primary location, their primary assets. So whenever someone is willing to do a project, they're going to call up those guys and they're going to say, hey, you know what? Now I call my bank, I can have like a cheap loan and I want to develop and buy this, uh, this commerce, uh, this store, and I want to grow to expand at a cheap price and they're going to be, become their new tenants and this is how it's going to roll. The point about REITs right now is you need to figure out if those companies have enough liquid assets to weather the storm, go through it, and once the economy starts to kick back in in 2021 or 2022, they still need to be alive. In this case, this is what's gonna happen. And in the meantime, it's a very good way to make a quick profit if you're looking to make a play on volatility. Um, this one, I don't intend to keep it forever. I'm not a REIT guy, I'm still young and I'm not looking for income, but I can see a great opportunity when I see one. And I think that this one is pretty good. I'm already all up like 20% of my account uh, on that trade and there's still room for you to join in. So those who have subscribed to my free newsletter have received this morning Cisco and Brookfield property um, partners stock cards, the complete uh, analysis that we have done on those two, completely free. And those who are a part of my DSR membership, they actually received 20 ideas this morning in our newsletter. So if you wanna have more information about that, just click on the links below. You have a link to subscribe to my free newsletter or a link to, to go see Dividend Stocks Rocks and see if it fits your portfolio uh, strategy. And if not, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel make sure that you don't miss any videos I'm gonna come in back next week with more stuff more stock picking ideas and more stock commentary on the market that is quite crazy this morning so I hope that you're invested and you're making money uh, I think it's gonna be a good day today so it's a good thing so until next video stay invested